Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Adrian Auger and I'm part of the international team at Mounts as a technical sales manager. We are gathering today to talk about error proofing system. And this is what we've been discussing for the last few sessions. In the last few sessions, we saw and discussed about how the EC and ECD series new tools can help bring some error proofing uh, features to the SMD line. We discussed about tightening strategies, angle control torque monitoring or torque control angle monitoring. We discussed as well the programmable tolerance in terms of torque, angle windows also. We saw how the ECT controllers can bring some model functions, some kind of process control features to the assembly. We also saw how to program screw counting, making sure that the parts leave the assembly line with all the screws fastened. And then another aspect of error proofing is obviously communication. So we as well discussed how the tool can communicate with the network, whether through the 25 pin IO or the RS-232 and Ethernet ports as well for network communication. Today, we are going to see how the tool can be not only programmed from its touchscreen, but also through the software that comes with the tool. This software is a license-free software. It's included with the tool without any license to renew and pay every year. Once again, the software is included with the tool. This software will give us access to everything that is programmable through the controller. We will have access to the presets, but we will also have access to a few added features such as a more detailed graphic function, real-time monitoring, and uh, other features that we will see right now. Throughout this workshop, if you have any questions, feel free to write them in the chat. We will review and answer them at the end of this workshop. So first, let's have a look at how does the software compare to the controller. So let's first have a look at the controller itself. And you will see on the controller that we have, I will get rid of this. You will see on the controller that we have the presets. And when we access the menu here, we have different submenus, including parameter. And what we'll see from the software is a similar kind of a structure. So I will share the software here. And now what you see is the main page when we start working with the software. So we see that I'm connected on the bottom left here. The controller is the ECTD 5000, the firmware version, the tool that's connected to the controller, the serial number of the tool. And we see now that I'm connected through the COM port 27. And if we access the settings, this is where the menu will be similar to what we have on the controller itself. We have the fastening, we have the advanced functions, screw counting, input output, the controller menu, the network settings, multi-sequence, and the models. On the right here, you will see a few more tabs, and this is something that we will review in a few minutes. So first, when we look at the fastening tab, we see here 
all the 15 different presets immediately visible on the screen. And for each of them, we can easily change the settings. We can change from torque control angle monitoring to angle control torque monitoring, change the target torque or the max torque in that case. So we can change every parameter here. If we look back at the screen, you will see that as I change the settings, so let's put it back to five Newton meters. As I change the settings, here we are at five Newton meters. If I change the target torque to three Newton meters, it will automatically communicate it to the controller and change the target torque to three Newton meters for preset one. So going back to the software, again, access to all 15 presets here, easily programmable and accessible. In terms of input output, we can as well here assign them exactly the way we want, just like on the controller itself, we can change for which type of signal preset input number one will be used. Um, as an example, we can do the same for the output as well. Screw counting is where we will find the general screw counting feature that will be applicable to all the parameters and presets in the tool. Advanced functions here will be divided the same way as the presets. So one to 15 with the four sub menus, which are once more free reverse rotation. So counterclockwise rotation before the fastening, thread tapping to manage prevailing torque. So thread cutting strategies where the um, torque needed to cut the thread is higher than the target torque. Engaging torque detections to um, handle threaded holes where we'll be, we will be able to detect the friction of the screw on the thread so that we can have a repeatable starting point to measure the angle. And in the end, angle after torque up. So once more, if we want to set an angle once the torque was reached, this is where we'll do it here. In this example, now we can see that on the advanced functions number two, we have a 680 degree reverse rotation, so counterclockwise rotation at 150 RPM once the preset two was achieved. Controller functions will be here related to general settings. So the driver ID, so the ID of the controller in case several controller controllers are connected together to the same network. The torque unit, we can change the password, enable or disable the auto speed, which is a feature of the tool. Basically, do you want to let the tool decide for the speed by itself, or do you want to set the speed yourself? Use max torque for reverse. Do we want to give full power to the tool to unfasten the screws and all the other parameters that we've seen over the last workshops will be available here. Multi-sequence is going to be divided in multi-sequence one and two with the 10 different steps. So once more, multi-sequence will be used for, um, as an example, soft joint applications where we will be able to compress the parts, loosen them slightly, and then fasten them at the target torque. It can be used as well for helicoil application where we can turn and fasten tight, run the helicoil 
to a specific torque and loosen it to reach the desired height. So several applications like this with the multi-sequence. Models we'll find here are 15 different models with each are 20 different steps. In that case here, we will make step one will be a three fast settings using preset one. And then step two will be three fastening using pre preset three. So each of the steps will follow each other automatically as designed in this program. We can see that for each step, we can have different type of um, command. So we can use that for fastening or we can use a specific step for a delay, allowing the operator to make an operation. We can wait for an input until we go to the next step, which can be, as an example, uh, presence sensor, or we can send an output allowing the workstation to navigate around this fastening process, or we can also wait for a barcode to be read so that we can again move to the next step, which can be, as an example, a part subassembly where the operator would read the barcode before the tool is allowed to move to the next step. Network is where we will be able to set the IP address. The mode is going to, to communicate or be assigned. Is it static or dynamic? So once more, IP address, net mask, gateway, and port. And here we will have the driver information. So we'll have the serial number of the driver that's connected right now to the controller, the model, the gear ratio, and the version of the software in the driver. We also have the calibration. The ECT tools are transducerized tools. So they include a dynamic sensor inside the tool. So obviously the sensor is calibrated and this is where we find the calibration information for the included sensor inside the ECT tools. Here we can back up all the settings that are in the controller. It can be useful in case of several stations working the same way. We can create all the programming on one of the controller, back up the information and install this programming on other controllers, or we can use the controller this week for a specific assembly process. And next week, the controller will be used for a different assembly process. And we will be able to here back up the whole controller for specific assembly process, which will be able to be called again or restored here in case this specific assembly process comes back again in the future. The monitoring tab is going to be where we will notice the most difference between what's available on the controller through the touchscreen and what's available on the software itself. So the first tab is real time here. And you will see this real time includes the fastening time, the preset that was used, the date and time of the fastening, what was the target torque, what was the torque achieved, and all the kind of information that is necessary for full traceability. So let's have a look and see what happens when we use that and make a fastening. So here we have the information that this was the first fastening. It happened at 10.14 today. 
preset use was preset number one, fastening time 930 milliseconds, target torque three Newton meters, achieved torque 3.01 Newton meters at 150 RPM. The different angle here will be angle one before the snug torque, angle two after the snug torque, which is the moment when the tool will start slowing down to reach the final torque. Here, 685 degrees is the addition between angle one and angle two. And then we have the status fastening complete. So this is what is sent on the network. The fastening was done properly. It's also sent on the IO so that we can communicate this information to a PLC. The direction of the tool was forward or clockwise. Remaining screw is four. Here we have a counting program for five screws. So if I keep on making fastening, you will see that the remaining screw is being counted down. And once we made the last screw, we come back to five. So five remaining screws from that specific point. Of course, we can also detect error signals. So let's have a mistake. So here I fastened an already fastened screw. I didn't reach the minimum angle. So we have the error signal and the error code 330, which means that the torque was reached before the minimum angle. Same goes if we reach the max angle, we will have the error signal 332, which means that the max angle was reached, the tool stopped, and then we have an error signal. You can see on the right a column called barcode. So in the previous workshop, we saw how the barcode can be used to select presets, to select models to also navigate through different steps in the models. So we can store this barcode information and link it to the data so that we have not only traceability, but we have traceability linked to the barcode information. So it's easy once back to the office or through the network to find the fastening events link to a specific barcode, to a specific part, or to a specific lot. So once more, this information is sent through the network, through the RS-232 and Ethernet ports. The communication protocol for those ports are Modbus or Open Protocol. But you can see also that this information is saved on the SD card that's included in the tool. In that case, this information would be saved on a CSV format, which is an Excel file, day by day, separate file. So very easy to find the information through the SD card as well. The SD card can be used as the traceability feature for uh, locations where network is not available. But the SD card can also be thought as a backup in case the network goes down for some reason. The all information will be stored in the SD card so that we can keep on with the assembly process, knowing that everything is kept anyway and we'll be able to find this information later on. So what we have here is, I will clear this information. And I will show you another feature that comes with this real-time monitoring. For that, I will change to preset number two. 
I will clear it again. And now let's have a look and make another Q render. So first you can see that the index, so the number of operation or step that was so saved starts from 11, which means that we already had 10 different steps since the controller was powered on. So it's also easy and making sure that each line will be differentiated once we save this information. But what we can see as well here, and I will stop, is process capability. So let's have a look and see how it looks like. So this process capability is going to allow you to make capability of the tool directly in the work conditions. So we have here a target torque, which is 5.01 Newton meters. We have our tolerance, plus or minus 10%. And we have here the min and max torque that was recorded through the three different fastening we've done. We have the range of deviation. And then we have here the CP, CPK. So obviously, statistics will not be valid with three counts only. But this will allow you to run several fastening directly on the line. And it runs in parallel to the real-time information. So we can make the real-time data while still doing the process capability of the tool in real time and then stop it and save it as a CSV file on the laptop or the computer so it can be easily found against again in the future. This is going to be very useful for um, users who have audits on a regular basis so they can show how the tool is capable and repeatable real on real working conditions. Now let's have a look at the graph here. So the graph is going to be an important and useful tool to set up the programming and the presets. So on the bottom right, we have the two different channels. We can use torque and speed as an example to see what's happening on the, during the assembly. So I'm changing that to preset one. So the information we have here is in red, the speed, in blue, the torque. We can see that we have the snug torque here. So the tool slows down until we reach the final target torque and the tool stops here. We can have several graphs running. We can change the channels as well, torque and angle. And then we can stop and save each of these groups one more as a CSV file. So easy to walk around that once it's saved on the laptop. Error is going to be where we have our last eight error codes. Remote is where we will be able to remotely control the tool. So this is more applicable for automation applications where the software can be used as the tool to run the tool day in, day out, or it can also be used as a tool to proof the automation cell 
before starting to have the full production go on. And auto customizing is something that we've seen in the previous workshops. So this is where the tool will be able to learn a specific assembly. So we can change the preset that we want to use, launch the customizing part, the self-teaching part, and then everything will be saved on that specific preset. So the speed, um, the different angle will be saved on the preset automatically. So this is a full review of the software, but there is something, there is a last thing I want to, to show here because it's a nice feature. And let's close these tabs here. We can move the different tabs this way. So we can have the graph at the bottom and the presets on the top as an example. And this will be very useful for programming the tool. Let's imagine that we want to set the tool. We want to set preset one. We will use the graph to run test rundowns and adjust all the settings specifically for the angles and the angle window in the preset one in real time, depending on the results given by the graph. We can also export those windows so that we can open on different location, different screens if necessary. So it's really flexible and adaptable to what you need and what you expect from the software. So this brings us to the full review that we've done of the tool. We've had so far three different sessions on how to program the EC and ECT software. Uh, controller, I would say. So now we'll uh, reach to the point where if you have any questions, feel free to write them in the chat. Tom will read them out loud so we can uh, answer them right away. Tom, do we have any questions? Adrian, uh, no questions at the moment. We just give it a couple of seconds. Okay, um, so we have one question from uh, Wolfgang. Um, how often has the customer to recalibrate the sensor inside the tool? Well, um, Paul Gung, what I would what I would suggest is um, power tools need to be checked whether it's transistorized tool or uh, basic tool. The recommendation from any manufacturer is to check those tools, let's say every six months. So my recommendation would, would, would be to check the tool every six months, and then the recalibration can be done directly on the controller or the software by using this calibration feature in the controller menu. So it's a very simple task to do. Again, recommendation would be every six months. Okay, Adrian, I'm not seeing any more questions. Okay. Well, if you're, if you're having other questions that you want to send to me by email, send them here. You have my email address on the screen. We'd be a bit happy to answer your questions and make sure that you have everything you are waiting from us. We have, we have one more workshop left, and this is going to be on the uh, 
battery tools, so the EPT series, the battery transistorized tools. And this workshop will be held at 10.30 GMT, which is again UK time. So keep in mind if you are in a different time zone. And we will see how can the battery tools be related to the Cordy tools, the EC and ECT series in terms of functionalities, but also what else do they bring you and what are the advantages of using battery tools compared to uh, Cordy tools. So make sure that you are here in one hour and we'll have a look at these brand new tools that are being launched nowadays. Thank you very much, everyone, and see you in one hour.